testing, testing. Okay. Okay. Well, hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is actually Thursday, which means that it is vlog day. And I have I have a full-on, action-packed vlog for you guys. I don't know if you guys are prepared for the amount of action that is going to be packed into this vlog. But I don't take these words lightly. This vlog will be action-packed. <laughs> action. The level of packing action, of action-packing, rather, is going to be out of control. It's going to be out of control. We got rescued reviews here. They're making dinner for everybody. It's going to be fantastic. Did you guys see that? It's awesome. Appreciate that rescued reviews. Now, I can't do that thing anymore where I put all the timestamps up here like I used to in the old school style vlogs, but my main man, Jeremy V, I've already seen him in chat. I've already talked to him today. He's here. He's going to be collecting all of the timestamps throughout this whole vlog, and they are going to be that first pinned comment right underneath this video. It gets pinned there as soon as I can possibly. The first chance that I have to pin, I will pin. I'm not a stranger to pinning comments. I'll pin a comment. I'll pin a comment so quick you won't even know what happened. But that comment, <laughs> what am I even talking about? Welcome everybody, that comment's gonna be pinned right underneath this video. But yeah, like I said, full vlog this week. They actually, the, they're one thing, we're, we're missing one thing. The one thing that's going to be missing from this week's vlog, anybody guess? Nope, too slow, mail. I have actually and honestly zero mail, zero packages, zero nothing. Nothing coming in from China. Obviously, coronavirus, nothing coming in from China, nothing coming in from the States, no liquids, no patrons, no nothing. Package free, but that's okay. I'm actually really excited about this video being mail free because that's gonna, it's gonna free up some time. You know, we might get to do a proper retro vaping segment. We might get to do a proper getting to know Grim Green segment. We might get to do proper comments of the week at the end of this video. Super chats are on and those will be getting read at the end of every segment and I'm going to really try my damnedest tonight to get those super chats done at the end of every segment rather than the beginning of every segment. Because what happens is I get to the end of the segment and I'm like, oh, okay, what are we doing next? That's right, beer, you know, whatever, this. And then the, the bumper will roll and that's where the timestamp goes. And then I remember, oh yeah, I, sh I should have done all those super chats. I completely forgot to do all those super chats. So all the super chats will be getting done at the end of every segment. I want you all to hold me accountable about those super chats. I'm not even joking. So before I really dive into this vlog really too far, I wanted to address the little, uh, the little uh, whatever, that little weight graphic that I have. You know, when the, when the marimba music is playing, and everyone's just in the chat kind of chatting and just chilling and hanging out. And I have some propaganda on the screen. I like that. That's like my little like uh, feature presentation coming soon type of thing. It's just a little trailer. I put little important things up there. Maybe news articles sometimes. Maybe important tweets sometimes. That seems to be my favorite way to go is to put like one of my favorite tweets. One of my favorite tweets that I've seen throughout the week. I put that up there. And I wanted to expand on the one that was up there now. If I can find it, that is. Oh, which I'll be able to find it, yeah. So, She Devil, I don't, I don't know this person. Um, I only know, I don't believe I know this person. If I know this person, then I apologize for having a bad memory, but I'm pretty convinced I don't know this person. I only know them from vaping, like from the vape community and seeing this person's tweets on Twitter and retweeting things. And that's kind of my only interaction with this person. I think I was tagged in this. I'm not 100% sure, but there was a picture of a bunch of pharmaceutical medications kind of sitting out there all over this kitchen table. 
She Devil says, uh, unopened, these are unopened or unfinished medications that I no longer no longer require. Wow, I'm stumbling through my words like Joe Biden over here. That is goofy. Unopened or unfinished medications that I no longer required after transitioning from 18 years of combustible cigarette smoking to a cleaner form of nicotine, aka vaping. My brief my brief HX in replies. So this is the story in the replies. P.S. Flavored vaping products were and continue to be imperative for me. I'm going to try to power through and read this because it's actually a really it's actually a really great story of how this person stopped using all of their medications simply from quitting smoking. At 22, I was diagnosed with my with a form of COPD. My pulmonary test showed that my lungs were functioning like a 48 year old. That day, I was put on Advair 25050, and I was told that if I didn't quit smoking, I would die a horrible death. That's, yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the standard riot act right there. Every doctor will tell you that. Every doctor will tell you that. Every vapor will tell you that. Look, if you don't, if you don't quit smoking, you're in bad news. Bad news. Well-established, empirically, empirically bad news. Through the years, I've tried every FDA approved plus hypnosis with no avail. At 25, I was put on blood pressure meds for hypertension after being in ER with blood pressure readings of 178 over 150 and higher, all because of smoking. 12 years later, I finally found vaping. In the first year of vaping, I wasn't getting my usual case of chronic bronchitis every two or three months, and I hadn't required any black box warning antibiotics or oral steroids. That was that was the first in over a decade. My doctor Uh, changed me to a lower dose inhaler and also lowered my blood pressure medication. I then decided on my own to stop the Symbacort. I hadn't had one case of chronic bronchitis since transitioning completely to vaping nicotine. Not one instance, and this is coming from a person who used to get chronic bronchitis every two to three months. Not one case of chronic bronchitis since transitioning completely away from uh, cigarettes to vaping nicotine. Uh, below our Symbacort inhalers, I never used and also unfinished and opened unopened abuterol inhalers. The last time I had to take steroids for respiratory issue was 2013 prior to transitioning to vaping. When I went to the doctor, I told him I had been using my inhalers for months. He ordered pulmonary. F- I told him I hadn't been using my inhalers for months and he ordered pulmonary function tests. They came back great. My lungs are functioning just as they should. I'm going to post a link down in the description to this tweet because there's a little bit more to this story, but it's an incredible story. I was tagged. I think I was tagged in this. I don't know how I ran across this tweet. Do I follow She Devil? I don't. Well, I do now, but I didn't before. I don't know how I came across this, but as soon as I started reading this, as soon as I saw all those like unopened inhalers and talking about vaping and how no more inhalers anymore, I was instantly just sucked in and I read this and I read this story and I thought, what a great story. I mean, what a great anecdote because at the end of the day, that's all it really is in the eyes of the world is just an anecdote. But someone who smoked for 12 years was on all sorts of blood pressure, blood pressure medications and inhalers. Now after vaping, lowered blood pressure medication. I really do. I'm, I am Joe Bidening hard right now. Lower blood pressure medication, no more inhalers. I think that's incredible. She Devil has greatly improved their quality of life, their station in life, all because of vaping, all because of just this, this dumb thing that we love called vaping helped this person so much, so much. It's a deeply personal story. It's a personal thing to people. And it just drives me insane when I see politicians and how do, how on earth do you see public health committee members like bad mouthing vaping, talking about the unintended consequences of vaping. That's insane. That's insane. So that's something just right off the top that I wanted to share real quickly. We're going to get into some news and advocacy a little bit later on in the vlog as well. And thankfully, I mean, not thankfully, there's no mail. So maybe we'll get to spend a little bit more time in each segment, including the news news and advocacy, because there's a lot. There's a lot of news and a lot of advocacy to be ad, ad, advocated. advocated. Yeah, sure. All right. So the first things first, I want to do that thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. It's just my new favorite thing to do. So right now we are going to hear from William. Hey, Graham. Um, 
I'd just like to say thank you for all the work that you've done in regards to advocacy and all your videos and all that. It's super inspiring. It helped me quit cigarettes. Um, I've been vaping for about four or five years now. Um, been watching you ever since. Um, you're actually one of the first reviews I watched. Um, and I just want to say keep up the good work. It's been awesome. Um, I would like to shout out my moustache. <laughs> um, but seriously, I would like to shout out the shop that I'm working at, Bake Crew. We are based in Sydney and we have seven stores in, Auc in New Zealand, one in Auckland. Um, yeah, so if anyone's around the Sydney area, come check us out. Um, yeah, I would also like to uh, shout out, um, I don't want to shout out anyone else. Um, just, yeah, but I think you're, you're doing a great job. Um, I'm still rocking that Serpent Mini. I bought this from, I bought it when you reviewed it all those years ago. And I'm using this little Tesla Stealth, perfect little stealthy mod. And yeah, let's keep on vaping. Oh, there's no sound. Sound. Wow. Look, I'm new here, okay? I can't, I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. Seriously, I'm just out here winging it. Winging it. I should be unmuted by now. I should be unmuted right now. All right. Well, William, did you guys see William? Let's shout out William's mighty mustache. Because that was the mightiest mustache of all mustaches that have mustaches been that have I've ever seen from an Australian and his shop vape crew in Sydney should be back should be back on I don't know why I muted the sound there too it's because I knew I had to run to the kitchen and I didn't want to hear you I don't want you guys to hear me like <gasps> like run to the kitchen clump 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 slam the door clump 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 come all the way back I'm like no we'll just mute it and I'll remember and I did not remember. But if anybody else out there, I know, that was a real Joe Biden move, wasn't it? Couldn't you just see Joe Biden walking up to the, to the microphone up there and just shouting and it's, and it's not on? And they're like, Joe, turn your, Joe, Joe, turn your mic on. Joe, turn your microphone on. And then he just mumbles through a few other sentences. Well, if anybody else out there, and I promise I won't butcher it as bad as I butchered Williams there, if anybody else out there has a video that they'd like to see featured on this vlog, absolutely send them on over to me, nick at groomgreen.com. Just mark your subject, that one thing. You can shout yourself out, shout your shop out, shoot the shit, talk about your setup, talk about your favorite liquid, your least favorite liquid, shout out your family, shout out whoever you want. I use them. I use them on the show. So send them on over, nick at groomgreen.com. So before we get to beer, right? Before we get to beer, uh, let's do these super chats. We're gonna end with that's wicked up. That's wicked up. So we have uh, Daniel here, very gracious of you. Woohoo, my birthday and vlog day. Can't get any better than this. Oh, it can, Daniel. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Daniel. Thank you for joining me and hanging out with me on your birthday. I feel like I, f thank you. I mean, I appreciate that. You could spend your birthday anywhere you want, but you're spending it with me and God damn it, that's, I love that. Logan, very gracious of you. Looking super fly today. Happy vlog day. I appreciate that, Logan exhales. 
I really do appreciate that. And happy vlog day to you. Barbara, I just super chatted to say I love you. Oh, you want me to sing that? I just super chatted to say I love you. Love you too, Barbara. Appreciate you. Mark, very gracious of you. Great story. It is a great story, isn't it? Damn, what a great story. Stan, Tenacious TX Vapes. Love that story, bro. bro. The vlog is my favorite video of the week. Oh, thank you. Keep kicking, man. Keep kicking as, man. Typo from Stan. Keep kicking as, man. Uh, just some motivation. Yeah, hashtag positively. Positive vibes only. Positive vibes only, my man. Look, I'm totally on board. That's wicked up. Here's where we're going to end it. Yo-Yoy Nick caught the latest dogs barking in the distance, and Yo-Yoy isn't that difficult to say. <laughs> Sorry, Fickle. Too bad you didn't find Hoffa in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. We have a we do the sometimes my wife and I, Casey, we do a podcast for the patrons. It's called Dogs Barking in the Distance, and we told a story about uh, unearthing Jimmy Hoffa's uh, G <laughs> unearthing Jimmy Hoffa's gravestone in our backyard. That well, obviously, it did not did not turn out to be Jimmy Hoffa. But uh, hey, it was exciting while we it was exciting in the moment. It was exciting in the moment. So whoops, now what I want to do? I'm parched. I need a delicious frosty beverage because I'm a free adult American. So let, damn it, let's have some beer. So this beer, this beer comes with a lot of wax on it. I mean, you know, wax tip dipped bottles. They dip the bottles in wax. It's like a, it's like a fancy thing. And I'm just here trying to scrape wax off of this so that I can. It's like I know safety first. Cut towards your buddy, not towards your buddy. What? Why? Why? Just because it's fancy? It's like oh, we want wax tipped. We want wax tipped bottles. It's so fancy. If I could get into this bottle, we could drink some beer. There it is. There's a little bit more. God damn it, that hurt. All right. Double waxed, double dipped in wax. That is silly. You're already losing points from me, Acoustic Ales Brewing Experience. The beer we have to taste tonight comes from Acoustic Ales Brewing Experience. This is called Unplugged Forester. I legitimately do not have any idea where this beer came from. I did not purchase it myself. Drink through the wax like a man. Eat the wax. I wonder what this wax tastes like. Wax. The answer is wax. That wax tastes like wax. I did not purchase this beer. I believe this beer is still from the care package from uh, Tyra, from Smacks. Not, not too long ago. I got some beer from Smacks. Just some beer, and I think this is a Smacks beer. I'm not 100% Smacks. Tyra, if you're watching this, let me know if this is, uh, if you sent this to me. Oh. But I'm really looking forward to this. This is an Imperial, Imperial Chocolate Oatmeal Stout. How great does that sound right now? An Imperial Chocolate Oatmeal Stout brewed in the great state of California down in, uh, I hate that term, my old stomping grounds. Down where I used to live, San Diego, I'm assuming this is going to pour very, very dark because it's an imperial chocolate oatmeal stout. It's just going to be dark. Even the head on top is like a really, oh, oh, even really is a dark is a dark head. It's just a different, you know, I, one of the things that I love about beer, beer, it's one of the same, one of the things I really love about e-liquids too, and coffee, and all food, and all beverages, there's just such a wide variety of beers. I mean, just the sheer kinds and types of beers, and it will completely change the, fro the, the flavor profile if you use different yeasts and things like this. It's fascinating. The world of beer and the flavors of the world of beer are just fascinating to me. Now, I know actually nothing about this beer, so I'm going to have to do some quick Google foo here, but let's call it 
acoustic brewing experience. Nope. Why did it do that? I don't want that, Google. It's not, okay. Acoustic ales. This is the unplugged Forester. Uh, all I can think of is a, a Forester Subaru. So I think of an unplugged Forester. Like, oh, you forgot to fr plug your, your, your Subaru Forester in. Uh, so this has a 4.2 rating over there on untapped, which is the only place it is. Anyway, I'm, I'm gonna dig into this. Cheers, clink, here's to you guys. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. The first thing, I, it tastes like an oatmeal stout. I. I have a hard time. I have a hard time finding a lot of delicate flavors in beers with this high of an ABV, because all I can taste right out of the gate. Where's the ABV on here? I don't even know what it is. I'm just assuming it's high. Don't even know where it is. Okay, twelve and a half. So what I taste right up front is just high alcohol, just that boozy, bourbony, alcoholy flavor. It's a big oatmeal stout. There's like. There's some chocolate, like I wouldn't even describe it as like a chocolatey flavor. It's more of like a cacao, cacao nibs, cacao nibs type of flavor, sort of like that not really sweetened Hershey cocoa essence, whatever this is, a cocoa essence, the cocoa essence hand motion. It's kind of what I get out of this big Big beer, big body, syrupy mouthfeel. Ah, yeah. So this is a big old 12.5% alcohol. This should be great for the vlog. Doesn't high ABV beers always just make the vlog a little bit better? You know, a little bit more fun. I have one liquid and one liquid only that I know is probably going to pair with this really well, and it's that stinky ass e-liquid from last week, the Burst Backo Bold. I can't stop vaping it in spite of the fact that it smells like armpits, B.O., what did I say in that video? B.O., armpits, stinky feet, and dog hair. Yeah, the vapor still smells bad, but the vape itself is oh so good. Just a delightful, delightful, delicious honey kind of based tobacco flavor. I think it's gonna go really well with this. I'm talking because I have a burp. <clears throat> okay, sorry, burp life. <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, hey, that's great. You know what, that's great. I, I truly and honestly, most every tobacco liquid that I've really ever tried, even if I don't particularly enjoy that that tobacco e-liquid, most every tobacco e-liquid will pair well with, with beer, especially big, bold porters, stouts, things like that. I just find that uh, I just find that tobacco flavors really go a long way, really go a long way. And this one's great. This is a great tobacco flavor. But again, it just smells. I had I dedicated a whole video to how bad it smelled because it smell it is ob objectively objectionable. Objectively objectionable. That's what I'm going to say. Anyone will say that this vape stinks. I don't think there's a person in the chat that would walk in this office right now and be like, "Oh, that vape smells good." Not a chance. Oh, but that's delightful. That little pairing right there is just freaking delightful. So delightful. Man, those complement each other so well. I'm looking forward to consuming the rest of this uh, high ABV beverage throughout the rest of the vlog. I think it's gonna make things uh, much more fun and exciting. So, so that's beer, you guys. Hope everybody has a, a nice vape and a frosty beverage with them tonight, whether it's beer or Whatever else you want to drink. Diet Coke? You got a nice Diet Coke? Let's have some Diet Cokes, you guys. So uh, real quickly, I just want to mention a few things that I've been vaping. It honestly has not been that much. I've come to this point with my vaping where 
I really, really only keep setups around if I am kind of like head over heels in love with them. I have no time in my life anymore for mediocre setups. I have no time in my life anymore for mods and atomizers and tanks that I don't care about. I have no time for mediocrity. I want a good vape and I want it right now. And so I keep my, basically what I consider to be like my favorite best of the best stuff that I'm actively, actively using out. And the rest, goodbye. Go in a closet, go over here, go over there. Wait for the day where I'm gonna fiddle around with a bunch of vape stuff because we all have those days. I have those days. I actually look forward to those days where I get to fiddle around with vape stuff. But in the meantime, it's just bangers. Only bangers. And I guess the first banger you saw, it's that Stan Tenacious TX Vapes uh, mod. It's, it's, it's from him and Unicorn. I don't remember the exact name of this, although I'm sure the chat may remind me in about 30 seconds. This was the retro vape from last week. It's topped with that Ocula RDA and a DHD little nub tip on there that I thought was kind of matchy matchy. Burst back oh bold. Do I even need to say it? Hello. Welcome to Stinky Socktown. So that's been great. Um, also, this has rarely left my hand. It's that damn Mike Vapes clutch mech mod. I don't know if I could love a mech mod as much as, much as I love this mech mod. I got it topped with that special edition Grim Army original recipe recoil on top. It's loaded up with a throwbacky flavor juice. I was just feeling very nostalgic, very reminiscent of like 2014 when Animal Carnage was like everyone's favorite liquid. So I wanted to try some, uh, I wanted to have that flavor again. I know it's not Animal Car Carnage, it's Confectionary's Original Red, but for all intents and purposes, this is Animal Carnage. It could be a one for one clone. It just tastes like delicious red vines, delicious, delicious red vines with a dying battery, damn it. Yep, gotta love mechs. And the thing is, this is one of those things that I really like about mechs. I don't like it until I remember that I like it because before that, I hate it. Does that make any sense? So you know what I hate? It's when a mech mod is dying and the battery is just slowly dying just slowly dying and you get down there and you're like, oh, this is weak and it's slowly dying. And then you remember, I can just put a new battery in here and you throw a new battery in there and it's like, it just, it just vapor, voluminous amounts of vapor just explode into your mouth and you're just like, ah, yeah, mech mods. That's what, you know, that's what I remember about mech mods, that hard hitting mech mod. I need new batteries in it. Of course, for Mark, rest in peace, Mark. Uh, I'm using the Warlock's Hammer with Grim Army, Odorous, Guar on the back, another uh, special edition Rebel or Recoil on there, another purpley kind of matchy DHD tip on there. This is loaded up with Smacks, Secret Crush. This has just been my fire juice. Like I just can't get enough of it. And I saw a post that Thomas Crow did on the Grim Army uh, Facebook group where he said, be sure to shake your bottle of liquid every time you use it because there's some sort of flavor component that will settle at the bottom and if you don't shake it up, it tastes funny. And I thought, I've never done that. And then I realized I do kind of like shake every bottle before I drip it. Like every bottle, I'll just, before I drip, I just kind of give it a little bit of a shake and I don't know what that is. I don't know why that is. I don't know what or why that is. These are also dying batteries. Because I've just been using these like crazy. Oh, these batteries are super dead. Okay, super, super, super gone batteries. Sorry, batteries. Coco, uh, it's just my mouth to lung banger that I really, really like a lot. It's filled up with six milligram Cubano from V God. I uh, had the opportunity to hang out with Shaq recently from V God. Um, he wouldn't let me leave without taking something, so I took some some Cubano some six milligram Cubano that I was really excited about. Lastly, I mean literally lastly, hanging in there hard with the USV Arc, although uh, the, as days go by, as days go by, I, uh, I find myself enjoying this device less and less, and at the same time, more and more. 
It's interesting. I really like this mod. I really like using it, but there's a few critically annoying things about it that every time this annoying things happen, I just want to put this mod on a shelf and never use it again. I'm going to have a video hopefully next week uh, about why things I like and really dislike about regulated mods and how you kind of start hating your favorite regulated mod after a while, even though you loved it for so long. That's what we're going to have. So USB Arc, Kali V2 is going to get a review very soon as well. Kind of in love with this RDA. And that's loaded up with Super Good. This is a UK brand. This is Pear Fizz Champagne Pear Lime. And it's amazing. I want to thank Kent for getting me into this liquid. And as amazing as this liquid is, I can only vape it for very short bursts of time. This is like a palate cleanser liquid. It's delicious. I mean, the first toot I took on this stuff, I completely blown away. I had to get some right then and there. I wanted to vape it so bad. After like five minutes of vaping on this, I'm instantly ready for something else, but I still crave it. I'll still come back to it frequently, but I can only do it in short bursts. And I don't know why, it's just one of those flavors, you know? I don't know, we always, we have weird things that we do with different flavors and, you know, sometimes there's used to be that uh, watermelon flavors would just make me cough. For no, I couldn't figure it out. All watermelon flavors, almost any and all watermelon flavor just made me cough. It's just one of those weird quirky juice things. But it's so good. This liquid is the bomb.com. It's so good. It's so freaking good. So yeah, that's really, uh, you know, that's really le more or less what I have been vaping uh, lately. I guess, dang, we don't have any mail. Let's, uh, let's do some super chats before we get into the next segment. I'm reminding myself that I need to do the super chats before we get before we get anywhere else. So, the dude reviews. Oh, I didn't give you guys any uh, fancy bumper action. Let's just run the whole thing. Let's run the whole bumper tonight. Let's just run it. <laughs> whole bumper, unbelievable. The dude reviews. Hello, Nick. CT Vapors, uh, flavor ban, HB 5020, which would ban vapor products in flavors other than tobacco and limit Nick to 35 milligram, has a public hearing on 3620. Please go to CASA and the call to action. I'm gonna do you one better, the dude reviews. I'm gonna find that CASA call to action and I'm gonna put it in the description. Nope, 36, oh, that's tomorrow. Okay, so this is happening tomorrow in Connecticut. I'm uh, surprised to see Connecticut putting in their own 35 milligram Nick cap. That's not something I really thought I'd ever see from a state. That's just interesting. This is the first state, I believe, Connecticut, that is going to do a nicotine cap, flavor ban, and a nicotine cap. Why the nicotine cap if you're gonna do a flavor ban? Why? You're already making, as I've said thousands of times, the most successful stop smoking aid in the history of America less appealing by taking away flavors. Do you wanna make it even less appealing by lowering the nicotine of it? And I look, I believe, we talked about this on the podcast a little bit, I believe in a nicotine cap. I think it's gonna come eventually. And I think it's just something that kind of just does need to happen. I kind of think it just needs to happen. 35 milligram is a weird, I don't know, like a weird arbitrary number. I don't know, that just seems really weird to me, the dude reviews, but we'll get it out there on the vlog. Flavor ban 5020, this is HB 5020 in Connecticut. Go to CASA, someone can find that call to action and put it in the chat. It looks like Addy Toonies all over all the links like crazy. If anybody has that call to action, throw it in the chat. I'll throw it in the description of this video if it's in time before tomorrow. Uh, shout out to the Connecticut Vapors. Eifer, very gracious of you. Guess I'm vaping mung bean again. No. Why, Eifer? Stop that right away. Uh, some pox ridden son of a jack and ape in New York wants to double the taxes on beer. Wait, is this Kumo? Kumo wants to double the taxes on beer as well? <laughs> If this is Kumo, I'm gonna be so happy. Man, that guy sucks. He just sucks. Kumo just sucks. And I could not, 
I could not stop laughing the other day. And it's, it's something that I should not have been laughing about. But I could not stop laughing the other day when I'm watching this governor, New York Governor Cuomo's press conference about the coronavirus, which the coronavirus is, is a very real thing. Very, very real thing. I see him get up there on television and he just says, oh, the coronavirus, it's an epidemic. And I just could not stop laughing. And I just thought of The Incredibles. When everything's an epidemic, nothing is. How many times in 2019, 2018, 2019, and so far in 2020, have we heard the term epidemic described for lots of things? It's going to lose all meaning. Not everything can be an epidemic. And when you start saying everything is an epidemic, when we have a real epidemic, no one's going to believe you. No one's going to believe you. Faith in the CDC is already shot. My trust in the CDC is gone. Lots of people's trust in the CDC is gone because of the way that they handled Evoli. Discredit the myth-making machine. Discredit the myth-making machine. Uh, Cloudy Chats, very gracious of you. Vlog day is the best day. Great meeting you at NZ Expo. Fuck, that was fun. Loved New Zealand. Great to meet you as well. You, You have a fist bump right there. I appreciate you. I'm glad you like vlog day. Thank you. That's wicked up. Dirty socks, armpits, and dog farts. Yes, that's what it was. Let me just make sure that that's still what this smells like. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much that. <laughs> uh, I miss Caramel Corpse. Where can I find it? Uh, Omega, Omega, DIY. It wasn't, uh, Caramel Corpse honestly wasn't that complicated of a liquid. Um, it could be DIY'd. As far as where you can find it is nowhere. Namber Juice is closed. Namber Juice has ceased operations. We're not selling any liquid anymore. We are officially done, dissolved, gone. Namber Juice is done in every official capacity imaginable, unfortunately. So no more Caramel Corpse, I know. It's a huge bummer. I really like Caramel Corpse. Look, I really liked a lot of our flavors. But that's uh, that's neither here nor there. So let's, uh, why is the Super Chat still on? So now that we got those Super Chats done, let's, uh, dude, the, we, uh, this is wide open. You want to just do the retro vape right now? I want to. Hi. So the retro vape that I have been wanting to do for weeks now, weeks and weeks, and I keep forgetting and keep forgetting, and then it's like, oh, retro vape doesn't happen, and then last week we had that other retro vape, and then now, now we're finally going to do this retro vape. Okay, going to take some guesses. Who wants to guess the RTA? I've only talked about it about a thousand times in the last few weeks. This is an RTA that uh, some people in the vape industry have been very split on. Timbo85, Nick, my dude, sorry once again for being late. Unacceptable, Timbo. (laughs) Unacceptable. Look, if you're not here at 4.30 when this starts, you can just just get out. I'm just kidding, Timbo. You're welcome anytime. I'm glad you're here, bro. Silverplay RTA. Silverplay RTA. Now, this isn't a retro vape in the sense that this is an incredibly old product or anything like that. It's a little bit old. I would say it's, when did this come out? Three years old? Two years old? I feel like it's three years old. Whoops. I feel like the silver play is, I'm going to go ahead and just say that it's, I think it's three years old. I just think it's three years old. So the silver play was an RTA, and it still is an RTA. And it's a single coil RTA that I really thoroughly enjoyed. I kind of liked everything about it. I liked how easy to build it was. I liked how easy to wick it was. I liked that it wicked well, had nice airflow. I got really good flavor from it. I was just a big fan of this RTA. There were some other people on YouTube. Let's call him Jay Hayes. No, okay, we're just gonna call him Jay Hayes. He hated it. He really disliked this RTA and it always confused me. It always confused me. And it's one of those things where ultimately, that's one, I don't care. That's fine. 
people can like whatever they want to like. We're all, if we all agreed on the same shit, the world would be a really, really, really boring place. Really, really very boring place. And so I liked that there was like some controversy. Not necessarily controversy, but you know what I mean. Some, some mixed emotions, some mixed feelings about this particular RTA. See, that's too hot. He might have been just running it too hot. So this is a 0.4 round wire build in here. And I'm going to turn this to 40 watts. 0.44, 40 watts. It does need to be wicked. I'm going to be using uh, cotton bacon prime to wick this up. It's basically the only cotton I use. In the interest of open transparency, uh, Cotton Bacon is a sponsor of the Culture of Clouds podcast, so they pay us to advertise on our podcast. I also just happen to really, really enjoy the product, and I wouldn't take a sponsorship from a company that I didn't believe in 100%. So we're just going to wick this up real fast, as fast as we possibly can with some freaking Cotton Bacon freaking Prime. It's just a little single coil banger. I don't think it's going to uh, gunu. I don't think it's going to focus on that deck. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. That's kind of incredible. Focus in right on that deck. I'm going to be using this on the one of one solid brass BMI Grim Army Kassaw fundraiser edition touches. One of one of these exists and I use it uh, sparingly, I guess. Very sparingly. Okay, I'm going to have to take off my glasses. Russian hacker mode. I'm gonna have to wick this real fast. And here's what I'll say about the silver plate. It was a real weird design. It was, it still is a real weird design. The way that you wick it is a little bit weird. The way that it goes together is a little bit weird. It had this like two part sort of chimney situation going on right here. So you could, you know, control your, your liquid flow, you could open it up or close it off however you wanted to. So I'm gonna do this. I think that's how this worked the best. I don't know. I haven't built this in so long, it could be terrible. I could be just messing this up royally right now. First thing I'm gonna do is center the cotton a little bit more. Okay, you go down there, you go here, yeah. Okay, I get why people would be annoyed by this. It's a little bit wonky. That was some wonkiness going on there. I'm gonna put some juice on here. I don't know what to put on here. Let's try, uh, let's do some of Sifu. Sifu's one of my Yo-Yo patron cool kids club. He sent me some of his DIY called uh, Peach Among Worlds. Three milligram, we're just gonna throw it in here. Oh, vapors, look at that happening. Yeah, it is. Get that nice and saturated. Let's put some out here too. Let's get down there the wicks. Stay saturated, you guys. Stay saturated. Maybe I'm just on an RTA kick because I think we're gonna be tasting our uh, very random liquid tasting out of an RTA as well. So that goes on like that. Am I doing this right? I don't know if I am, truly and honestly. I thought I was. Well, if I'm not, then we're gonna find out real quick. We're gonna find out real quick if I did this wrong. We could have done this completely wrong. Like I said, I really enjoyed the silver play. I liked vaping it. I liked using it. I thought it was a, I think I called it a banger. If I'm not mistaken, in my original silver play video, I think I called it a banger of an RTA. I stand by that. I still think it's a banger. Let's get it filled up here. All right. Well, dang, that came together uh, pretty quick. Let's open up this airflow all the way. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Look at that. I, I, that, that actually pulled, came together pretty damn quick. I wicked it. There was just a single coil round wire build in there. It was. Uh, 
I think it was a Ruby build. It was like two and a half millimeter, 26 gauge, uh, around a, yeah, 26 gauge anarchist around a two and a half millimeter, just single coil in there. I wicked it, filled it up with Sifu's peach among worlds. Let's give it a shot. One of the things that I do remember about this RTA is I run it at a lower wattage, just lower wattage. So this is a 0.4, a 0.43. I'm only gonna be running it at 40 watts. It's gonna give me 4.1 volts. Even, even if this is a little bit too low, it's still a good jumping off point to get your RTA to where you want it to be. This is just a general rule that I do with almost everything. I mean, RDAs, RTAs, sub ohm tanks, doesn't matter, is I always, always, always start your wattage real, real low. <coughs> Sorry, real, real low, because you're not gonna damage anything that way. Start your wattage real low. Even if it's too low, you just turn it up a little bit. Taste it, vape it. If it needs more, you turn it up a little bit. You just adjust to taste. So I start off low and then I work my way up. Fucking awesome. Flavor banger. This is a flavor banger 9000. I don't know. I need to rewatch Jay Hayes' review of this to see why he disliked it so much. I just knew that he did. And I don't remember why he disliked it so much. Me, I'm getting rock and flavor. I'm getting warmth out of this. I'm getting a nice smooth airflow. The airflow does feel uneven. It's something I say sometimes where because this airflow is only coming in directionally, one direction, it feels uneven. You know, especially if you're used to drawing on like an RDA where you can, and you feel swooshy air co airflow coming in from both sides. When you don't have that and you have a different sensation, it feels off or like, you know, I don't know, not level or something. Fucking flavor banger. It's a flavor banger. I really like the silver play. I really like the silver play. I don't understand the hate for it. There is a little bit of wonkiness involved with as far as how you capture your wicks and things like that, but it's certainly not overwhelming or, or difficult in any way. Very slight learning curve. And it's certainly not any more weird or fiddly or confusing than a lot of like high-end stuff that's out there. I mean, truly and honestly, getting that Ultem thing into the Jenna cap and then getting it back down onto the deck, I found that to be on the same fiddle level as trying to wick this silver play RTA. Fiddle, there's a fiddle factor to it. I don't know, I really like it. I really like it. If you can find a silver play out there, uh, in fact, I'll link in the description to my original review of it. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stand by everything I, I said in that video. Flavor banger. God, that's a flavor banger. I, I really like this Sifu's uh, Peach Among Worlds. If I had to DIY, I would steal this recipe and DIY it. Shit, I don't know what else to say. It's the silver play. It's rad. It's a rad RTA. Danielle Jones, you got your 100 watts right now? That's insanity. That's insanity. 0.11 at 88. You guys are high wattage vapors, a 0.1 at 100 watts. Damn, Danielle. Damn. I don't even, I don't vape, I've never vaped that hot. I've never gone, I mean, maybe with a few exceptions above 100 watts. Even this, this is, well, this is a 0.35, so it's really kind of more like a series, but this is at 80 watts, but that's still not quite six volts. I don't know. I just, I never felt the, the desire for like 100 plus watts. Even at 80 watts, that's plenty warm. And it, trust me, at 40 watts, that's when this silver play really, really, really works well. This is great. I love this RTA. I'm glad I got it back out because it just reinforces like, everything I like about this RTA. Except for when it mod doesn't fire. It's a weird thing. Every once in a while, just on this BMI Goldie, it just won't fire. I don't know, it's weird. It's not like this is for sale or anything, but 
Every once in a while, I press the button, doesn't fire. That is Flavor Country, my friends. That is Flavor Planet, Flavor Nation, Flavor Solar System. Still highly recommending the Silver Play. Still very, very highly recommending the Silver Play, man. What a great RTA. All right, Retro Vape. Well, that's the Silver Play. I got some more Retro Vapes all lined up. We got tons of old stuff. Uh, I have multiple, multiple patrons that have some very cool, very, very old vape gear that they are so kind to loan me so that we can put them here on this retro vaping segment. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be really great. So let's do some super chats before we, uh, before we jump to the very next segment. Let's get some of these, uh, let's get some of these super chats done. Uh, the Jack and Oh, okay. Okay. It's not Kumo. Damn it. I thought it was going to be Kumo. Uh, Harvey Epstein, no relation. What? Sure, just right click and print. I definitely want to print my live stream. Google search. I don't know who this Harvey Epstein fellow is. Harvey for New York? All right, Harvey Epstein. Father, husband, community organizer, assembly member for the 74th. Retweets do not equal endorsements. In New York, New York. He wants to... What? He wants to... Double taxes on beer. Yeah. Here's the thing. As dumb as that is, and that's dumb. That's just dumb. I can't think of a way to finish that. That's just dumb. I was trying to I was trying to think in my head of some sort of like reason why it's not dumb. It's dumb. Taxes are theft, and that's dumb. Homebrew. There you go, right? They're gonna ban flavors, so we go DIY. They're gonna double tax beer, so we homebrew. I've said this a thousand times and I'll continue to say it a thousand times. The market wants what the market wants. Regardless of government regulation, regardless of government taxes, the market wants what the market wants. The government knows that and they tax what the market wants at the highest rates possible, unfortunately. All right, Jack and Ape in question. Thanks, Eifer, I appreciate that. Stan, well, I guess you have to like the Tenacious Unicorn if you insist on using it topped with that... (laughs) Topped with that dirty juice, yes. I like the Tenacious Vapes Unicorn. You know what, Stan, I've liked basically every mech mod you've released. I feel like you're one of the people, and I promise this isn't just stroking Stan's ego here, you're one of the few people that really brought mech mods back. And I really like that. I'm, I, I'm thankful to you, Stan, for really bringing mech mods back. Like before Stan, I don't remember half as many mech mods. And I don't remember people being so stoked about stacked mechs, which personally, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I don't want to use it. More for you. Thank you, Stan, for bringing mechs back. Um, Joshua Miller release the recipes. Here's the thing. I would if I could. I would if I could, but I can't. And here's what I'll say. Just don't do business with the wrong people. I would release the recipes if I had the recipes, but I don't have the recipes. And it's a little bit of a sore subject for me, Josh. And I would 100% unflinchingly release those recipes. Can't. Can not. But it's a good idea. I mean, I'm on board. Vape in case, that's very gracious of you. Bro, I just think the government is trying to control us. I will not be controlled, my friend. Let's keep on vaping. Love you, man. Missed you, buddy. Buddy. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what the government does, though, right? That's that's the point of the government is control. That's They want power and they want control. And, and they'll dress it up in a lot of different ways. They'll dress it up and be like, well, no, this is for your own good. You know, they'll dress it up in, in certain different ways. Like this is something that we desire. We, we want more tyrannical government interference in our lives. No, we don't. I don't. I don't need a full-time babysitter. I feel like that's the point of government is to maintain that power, maintain that control. Even if you're voting for someone that you love, even if I vote for the libertarian guy, 
Maybe not the libertarian guy, but even if I vote for the libertarian guy, there's still going to be a lot of status quo governmental policies and regulations all still in place that would take decades to undo. I don't think a libertarian's up for it. So unfortunately, that's just where we're at. Control. Janet Jackson. Uh, Kevin, I don't know why I, that's a Janet Jackson song. I don't know why I just shouted out her name there. Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. What do you know about Janet Jackson? Kevin, very gracious of you. Boosh, Nick, you're the man. Have some pocket money for being awesome. All the fist bumps to you. Dude, Kevin, thank you. That's very gracious of you. Really appreciate that, my man. Bradley, uh, would you consider selling off your BMI touches? Been hurting for one ever since I missed the CASA fundraiser. Uh, love having you back. Bradley, I love being back. A, two, I could not possibly sell any of my BMI touches. Here's the thing, I have three of them. I have one with a design that never got used. Uh, I thought I had it on display somewhere. Nope. Okay, I had, uh, I have three. I have one with a design that never got used. It has my face on the door. And then I have a release of the green, the aluminum with the Grim Army on it. And then they sent me, made and sent me one singular solid brass. I can't even explain to you how heavy this thing is, Bradley. This, this mod is the heaviest mod of all time, Bradley. I don't think you would want it even if I was willing to sell it to you. They, I have one solid brass BMI touch. Uh, I don't know. Look, I'll get in contact with BMI. Maybe we can do another run. Maybe we can do another fundraiser type of thing for CASA. I think that would be really cool. And there seems to be, I mean, you're not the first person that has hit me up looking to buy one of these BMI touches. So here's what I'll say, Bradley. Never say never. For now, no. But hey, you never know what's going to happen. Honey Bees V2 is the best vooping vape. Change my mind, Steven Crowder. Okay, I won't change your mind. I agree with you. Yeah, Honey Bees V2, also known as Burst Backo Bold, is the best vooping vape, hands down. Eifer, government equals force equals control. Yes. <laughs> I mean, welcome. Welcome to America. Yes, government equals force uh, equals control. We are all just little piggy banks of money. <laughs> And the government wants to get the most that they can on their investment. They want a high return on their investment. And what makes them money? Taxes, baby. Taxes and sick people make the government money. I wrote that song. British Eyes. This is for postage for you to reconnect with Sage. <laughs> British Eyes is obsessed with Sage. Sage. Anybody, does everybody remember? Did anybody remember that story? You remember when I was in uh, Arizona and I told the story of Sage, my really cool hip youth counselor who was like, hey, let's rap about Christ and let's talk about Jesus and let's study the Bible. And I'm like, Sage is so cool. I'm going to be like Sage when I grow up. And he's, you know, I told this great story about my old youth counselor, Sage. I don't know where Sage is these days. You know, he was like five or six years older than me, six or seven years older than me, maybe. Uh, don't know where Sage went. Maybe someday Sage is going to show up and maybe I can get Sage on the vlog and we can talk about the buddy comment. Thank you for British eyes only. What would you like to do some, uh, would you like to do some news and advocacy right now? Cause I'm kind of feeling it. I'm kind of feeling some news. Let's just do the damn thing. Yeah. What? I like that news bumper so much. Let's do it again. One more time. Another. Another. Okay, that's too many times, man. That's too many times. So what do we got going on in, uh, in news and advocacy? The first thing I wanted to mention, the very first thing I wanted to mention right out of gate, I'm going to put a link in the description. I'm going to put a link in the chat right now. The United Vapors Alliance. God damn it, you guys were rallying again. We are rallying again. Even after the very first rally, I was instantly like, we should do that again. I can't wait. Let's do it again. When are we all coming back to DC? We're getting the band back together. United Vapors Alliance rally in DC, Saturday, May 2nd. Make your voices heard again. 
This is in DC, in the ellipse. If you didn't get to go to the first rally, you should definitely come to the second rally. Even if you came to the first rally, you should definitely come to the second rally. I'm gonna make the trip out to Washington DC on May 2nd. I'm gonna be at this rally. I can't not be at this rally. The first rally was such a fantastically wonderful, just empowering, patriotic experience. Like being involved in the government and 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 being there and protesting with signs, it just felt so unifying and like we were actually accomplishing shit. And we did, we did. So shout out to United Vapors Alliance. Uh, shout out to anybody involved in organizing this rally. I'll be there. I'd love to meet you there. I'd love to see you there. DC, Washington, DC. What else are you doing on May 2nd, huh? What else are you doing? Fly home on May 4th. Be home in time for Star Wars Day. Be home in time for May the 5th or May the 4th. <laughs> May the 5th. May the 5th is revenge of the 5th. We know that. So yeah, we're rallying. Uh, there's not many details Okay, there are not many details. In fact, I'm gonna get a better link for the description than that confusing Google link. There's a better link for the chat, a better link for the description. Follow the United Vaping Alliance, uh, United Vapors Alliance, I apologize, on Twitter to get, I'm assuming what are gonna be updates. Um, people kept telling me this is happening. Saturday, May 2nd, it's a rally. And the only place I can find it is one picture on their Twitter. It's not on their website. It's not on their Facebook group. It's not anywhere. So. I just wanna get the word out to as many people as I possibly can. And I'm hoping that you get the word out to as many people as you possibly can because I would love to see more people there than were there last time. Last time we had, it was beautiful, you guys. It was fucking beautiful. Just a sea, a sea of vapors. I want a bigger sea this time. I want a bigger, I was gonna say this year. I guess which would be accurate. I wanna see more people there. I want everybody there. Saturday, May 2nd, I'll be there. I don't know who else is gonna be there, but man, if you can find the time, this is one of those big things. You know, the first rally was such a, such a pivotal moment, such a huge part of that tobacco discussion that was going on then and is still going on now. And we need to show them that, look, our numbers haven't gone down. We're not giving up anytime soon. We need to shout in their faces that we vape and we vote. We need to shout in their faces that we vape and we vote. And on the heels of that, the point of this rally uh, isn't just we're here, we're loud, we vape, we vote. This, this rally actually has a specific sort of uh, messaging to it. We are protesting the PMTAs. We're demanding PMTA reform as soon as humanly possible. I think it's a little bit it's close. It's tight timing, you guys. It's tight timing having this rally on the second, and then May twelfth is the PMTA deadline. We're demanding PMTA reform ten days before the PMTAs are due. We've known that the PMTAs are due on May twelfth for like a year and a half now, and now we're demanding PMTA reform ten days before the PMTA pre-market tobacco applications are due. And on that May 12th, then the rest of the industry just becomes the black market. And unless you have an application in and it's been accepted, you will not be allowed to sell your shit on the American market. You will be the black market. You will have illegal products. So all your mech mods, Stan, if you're not going for a PMTA, you're, you will be selling illegal contraband, illegal black market contraband. So that's why we need PMTA reform. The best possible scenario that's going to come out of this is the only possible scenario. You guys remember uh, Avengers Endgame? You guys remember Avengers Infinity War when uh, Dr. Stephen Strange is looking through all the different realities, viewing all the different possible outcomes of this war and they only win it once? That's what this is. And then later in Avengers Endgame, when Tony Stark looks at, looks at Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange is like, yeah, this is it. This is it. We vape, we vote. We want PMTA reform. And look, we're not willing to settle. I'm not willing to settle. 
We need to be willing to settle though. That's an unrealistic point of view to take. You have to be willing to settle on some things. This is the federal government we're talking about. You have to be willing to settle on some things. I'm not okay with 90% of the market becoming the black market after May 12th, 2020. I think the best possible scenario, the only possible scenario that can possibly come out of this is that, they'll, that they change the date or that they move the date that's it. We're not going to get PMTA reform in 10 days. Our government moves at a, uh, how have I described this before? A snail in a puddle of molasses on top of an iceberg. That's how slow our federal government moves. So I doubt we're going to get PMTA reform in those 10 days, but I do think we could make a pretty big difference. I think a best case scenario Maybe they'll change the date. Maybe they'll move the date. Maybe they'll scrap the date entirely and say, look, in light of recent events, i.e. the United Vapors Alliance rally in the ellipse, maybe we're gonna change the date. Maybe we're gonna move the date. Maybe we're gonna change this whole PMTA pathway. Maybe Secretary Alex Azar, Azar, can finally make good on his, oh, we're going to work with small businesses to get them through this PMTA process. We're definitely going to reach out and work with small businesses for PMTA. Maybe he can finally make good on that. So there's a rally going. Don't say you can't go because you can go. You're just unable or unwilling to go. You can go. You are either just unwilling or unable, but you can't, I don't know. I'm not trying to be difficult on you. I just, seeing seeing the crowd last time, I want more, I want more people there. I want, and you don't know what kind of a feeling it is being in Washington, D.C., defending your rights, like being part of the process and protesting and being there with your fellow vapors and you're just all there and you're all there for a common cause and you're all chanting together and it's, I've never felt more connected and more unified with the vaping community than I did at that rally. I thought these are all my brothers and sisters. These are, we're all on the same team here. We're all fighting for the same thing. God damn it, this feels good. God damn it, this feels good. It's, it's an indescribable experience being in that crowd, witnessing the power of it and just being in it, like being a part of something that is bigger than yourself. It's, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome. I would not miss this for the world. I will be there. I will be there with bells on. No bells. I'll be there with a jacket on because it's probably going to be fucking freezing. Freezing. Freezing there. So that's happening. Just wanted to get that out there. I'm going to mention it as many times as I can. I want to get everybody there. The UVA, they're on Twitter. They're on Facebook. Saturday, May 2nd. The ellipse, you know what to do. Show up with your signs, show up in warm clothes and, 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 and initiate some real change. And one of the greatest things, and I don't mean to just keep harping on this, one of my favorite experiences from the rally, the last rally that we did was being part of it, A, and then the next day going to like, you know, the National Mall and seeing the, the American Heritage Museum where they have a display of all of these old protest signs and all of these things that people have protested for, you know, and social justice and equal rights and civil rights and all of this, it's incredible. And they talk about how really this protesting is the backbone of, of our country. It's the way to make your voices heard. It's, it's a way of saying, look, I'm mad as hell and I'm not gonna take this shit anymore. That's what protesting is. Rally, rally. I call it a protest. We are protesting the PMTA outright. PMTA reform now, hashtag no way PMTA. So that's out there. I'm gonna, that link is out there. I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put it in the description. Um, one other thing that I wanted to mention uh, here in the news and advocacy segment, um, Joe Biden, you know, what's going on there? What's going on with Joe Biden? How did Joe Biden go from, he might not even, you know, he's just nothing. He's pulling at like 8% to now he's, what? Joe Biden? 
This is the best. This is the best we could come up with. Joe Biden. Not we, the DNC. Joe Biden. Apart from all of the things I hate about Joe Biden, apart from all of the the multiple things that I really, truly dislike about Joe Biden. Do you see that video of him on Twitter smelling that little kid's ear? What the fuck is wrong with you? you? You didn't have to do that. He just, there's a little kid, you know, she's probably, I don't know, six, seven years old. Mom's holding her. Joe Biden just walks up, grab this kid's head, right? Like, and smells this kid's ear. What? That is a thousand times creepier. (laughs) Michelle Lynn, that is a thousand times creepier. That's the creepiest shit ever. Joe Biden would be, I believe, a disaster. Or not. Or he wouldn't be a disaster and he would just keep the status quo and we would ban vaping and we would just keep MSA and tobacco tax money rolling, keep going in these wars, you know. Uh, Joe Biden is the worst choice, IMO. I'm not ever gonna tell you who to vote for. Please vote your hopes, please vote your hopes. But I'm gonna voice my opinion that Joe Biden would be a disaster, disaster. Let's see what Joe Biden has to say about vaping while we're here. Joe Biden, this is according to uh, Bloomberg News, (laughs) which, sure, let's just spend a few billion dollars um, trying to run for president and just, that's like the ultimate fuck you to poor people, isn't it? Bloomberg spending billions of dollars to run for president and lose just for no reason. He knew he wasn't going to win. He just ran. Billions of dollars. He could have fl- fixed Michigan's water supply for that money. <laughs> I mean, he could have helped all the homeless in LA about that money. We talk about this on the podcast, but Bloomberg, I can't believe that people are cool with him burning that much money just for his own ego. That's crazy to me. Crazy to me. I'll, I'll vote for Suck My Matt 2020. Suck My Mod 2020. I heard he's going to pick uh, Amy Klobuchar as his uh, VP. That's just what I heard. That's just what I heard. So this is coming from Bloomberg News. Joe Biden says he would halt vaping sales pending more research. Well, holy shit, look at that. A Dem wants to ban things. Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden said he would halt the sale of vaping products until more research about its effects is concluded. I think Bloomberg meant meant to type R concluded in there, but it's whatever. Proposing even tighter restrictions than the Trump administration's partial sale on the flavored products. So just from that first paragraph, we know that Joe Biden wants to halt all... Look, you can call it whatever you want. You can say, oh, we're just halting all sales of the products. It's a ban. Joe Biden wants to ban vaping until more research about its effects are conducted. Does Joe Biden do, I look, and I don't expect every political candidate, every presidential candidate to be a subject matter expert on every possible issue, every possible everything. But a little bit of a deep dive would have probably given Joe Biden a lot of really good data, some really good science. He says there needs to be serious scientific data Royal College of Physicians is not good enough for Joe Biden. The New England Journal of Medicine is not good enough for Joe Biden. We need serious scientific data as to whether or not it has the kind of long-term damage on the lungs and it causes death before we allow it to be sold. Biden said Saturday in response to a voter question at the rally in Iowa. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration announced last week that it would begin enforcing the ban. It would be enforcing a ban on the sale of fruit and mint-flavored vape pods and cartridges within 30 days. This is, we knew this was a thing. We knew this is coming. The move followed a rise in vaping-related hospitalizations and deaths. So there you go. Bloomberg News, shocking that they're not being completely true and honest, still conflating legal nicotine vapes to the contaminated vitamin E acetate THC cartridges, still conflating the two. Not not super shocking from the Bloomberg playbook. 
but the sale of menthol products will continue as will the sale of flavored e-cigarette liquids that users can mix on their own, which are not as popular with children and teenagers. Yeah. Contraptions. Remember Scott Gottlieb and the contraptions? The contraptions. Contraptions and contraption liquid get to stay on the market till May. You know, we got till May. So st start learning how to fucking DIY. We got till May. President Donald Trump had initially expressed support for a full flavor ban on vapor products, only to yield to pressure from lobbyists and advisors who warned of political blowback, blowback from a full ban. I dislike, that's all I'm going to read from this article. I'm going to put the rest in the description. It's really only two or three more art, or more paragraphs, but it's, it's, uh, it's just Joe Biden talking about how he would ban vaping. Um, the one thing that upsets me in this is that this, this paragraph, this last paragraph I just read that says, President Donald Trump had initially expressed support for a full ban on flavored products only to yield to pressure from lobbyists and advisors who warned of a political blowback. They're saying this sentence in like a condescending way. What they should be doing is praising Donald Trump for listening to the public, for listening to his constituents his constituents are telling him, and not just him, whoever else runs. If Biden runs, if Bernie gets it, whatever. B political blowback is your constituents telling you that they don't approve of what you're doing. So in my opinion, I, we should be praising Donald Trump, and I can't believe I'm saying that, but we should be praising Donald Trump for listening to his constituents rather than just powering through regardless. Who cares what anybody thinks? I'm gonna do this anyway. He listened. He listened to his constituents. Political blow, I mean, they're making it seem like, oh, he's, he's just caving to pressure from lobbyists and his constituents. Yeah, you should be caving to pressure from your constituents. They're the ones that elected you. They're the ones that keep you in office. You should be always consistently listening to your public and your constituents. And the fact that Donald Trump is listening to his constituents should be praised. But not here, not on Bloomberg News. Of course not. They're gonna paint it, well, he's just caving. He's just caving. He doesn't care what's right for the country. He doesn't wanna ban all vaping products and all flavors. He doesn't know what's right for the country. Or maybe he's actually listening to the country and listening to his constituents and making a better decision to appease those that have elected him into office and those that keep him in power. This is a positive attribute of a politician. I'm assuming that if Bloomberg was in office, he would not have caved from lobbyists and he would not have he could have been warned of political blowback a thousand times over and he would not have altered course. Bloomberg is the type of guy, the nanny, who would have just said, no, I'm right. I know what's best. We're moving forward with this. Unreal. Joe Biden, I don't know. If he can pronounce vaping or if he can get through a sentence without mumbling or falling over, then maybe. You know, people people give Bernie Sanders a hard time because, he, you know, oh, he had a heart attack and he's 74 years old. Yes, he can also speak clearly and and string a sentence together, like a full sentence. Did you watch Bernie Sanders at the, or not Bernie Sanders, did you watch Joe Biden at the South Carolina debates? Wow. Did you watch his uh, Super Tuesday press conference? Wow. Wow. Mike Bloomberg is a communist. I agree with that. I 100% agree with that. Definitely agree with that. So here, I don't know if I put this in the, in the chat yet, but I'll put it in the chat right now. I'm going to put it in the description as well of this video if you want to check it out. But do we bother? Do we bother trying to appeal to the right? This is the crossroads we're at. Here's the crossroads that I'm at. 
Do we just vote for Trump hoping that he'll keep his promises, which I don't have a lot of faith that he will? Or do we try to honestly appeal to the left? Do we try to appeal to the left? Maybe the left is going to get into the presidency and we need to start appealing to the left. Or do we hedge our bets and go, (laughs) no, Trump has already talked about tobacco harm reduction. The left has not. Trump has already talked about protecting small businesses. The left has not. Trump has talked about defending adult choice. The left has not. Now, if we're hedging our bets as to how do we make, how do we get vaping to succeed? This, for anybody listening on the audio version, I'm holding my hands up in sort of an, ooh, I don't know, because I don't know. I don't know. With PMTAs coming up, I don't know. With the election coming up, I don't know. I don't know. I wish I knew, but I don't know. I'm just going to tell you to vote your hopes. Yes, we have to try to appeal to the left. Okay, Danielle, what do you have to say? Grim Green, yes, we have to try to appeal to the left. One side can't save us forever. Everything changes. I accept that. I accept that. How? How do we appeal to the left, Danielle? I don't know. I wish I knew how, but I don't. The only thing I can think of is Bernie Sanders and his Medicare for all. Smoking, vaping, disease, death, burden of cost on the government. Like maybe he could see through that. The one little glimmer of hope I have in Bernie Sanders, which who, who I otherwise vehemently disagree with most every single one of his policies, with the exception of taking cannabis off of the Schedule 1 classification. Like, Bernie, bro, do that. He said on the Joe Rogan podcast, he's a man of science and he believes in science. Elizabeth Warren said the same thing, but I have a tendency to believe Bernie Sanders just a little bit more because he's been consistent in his political career over the last 40 years. That's my only hope with the left is that they'll actually believe and listen to reason and listen to science. Please. That's, look, we're not asking for much, you know? We're not asking for much. All we want is to not smoke cigarettes and for you fuckers to look at the science. Just look, it's here. We can send it to you. I can fax it, email. I'm looking up here because the government is so big, you know, and intimidating that you kind of have to just, oh, the government, the government power, Mike Bloomberg. The government, I don't know why I threw Mike Bloomberg's name in there because he's short. Donald Trump ever was a tall man. The government cowering in front of the government. We're not asking for much. Look, we want some flavors. We don't want to smoke cigarettes. That's it. That's it. Treat us like alcohol. That's fine. We can be a vice. I don't care. We can be a vice. We can be deplorables. I don't really care. Just treat us like alcohol. We, We just want to vape. We're not asking for, you know, the world... Biden says he believes in science too, Mark. Well, I mean, look, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. If he believes in science, I mean, look, we got a guy, we got a guy in the administration right now, Mike Pence, who believes in uh, gay conversion therapy. What are you, a psychopath? I I really dislike Mike Pence. Don't forget, Mike Pence was the governor of of uh, of Indiana when all of that really, does anybody remember that really shady vape shit that happened in, uh, in Indiana? Wasn't it Indiana where they had to, uh, they had, uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't sell in Indiana unless you were using this particular security company? Do you remember that? There was all this, there was all this like controversy because Mike Pence passed all these laws about vaping in Indiana and one of them was that you had to use this one particular security company for your vape stores or your or your manufacturing facility. Bernie might be anti-vaping, but Bernie I believe is pro-science. I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here. Just trying to play devil's advocate. So That's what we got from Bloomberg News on Joe Biden. I believe I put that link in the description and I believe I will put that link down in the the chat as well. I put that in the chat. I think it should be in the description. It should be in the description.
description there. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is I'm gonna take a bio break real fast. That's the last thing I wanted to talk about here in the news and advocacy segment. So the first thing I'm gonna do is better. Wow. I feel like I could stream for another three hours. Whew. Hope everyone else took a bio break as well. So the last thing in the news and advocacy segment that I wanted to talk about here is uh, at, as it relates to my thumbnail. What, what, where's the, I have a good vape here. I have the silver play. God. So as it relates to my thumbnail, my thumbnail was a little bit confusing, right? I don't know. I, I thought I had a clear, like, artistic vision with my thumbnail this week. I'm not sure if that really came across. Really, what I wanted to portray was the United States being just this toxic, awful, political, grandstandy, like, morally superior, high groundy country. And because of that, like, we're apologizing to the United Kingdom and kind of apologizing to the rest of the world with how we're treating vaping. On the thumbnail, it's just the UK chilling over there with a vape, being like, what are you guys doing over there? It's crazy over here. We have, how many, how many organizations have chimed in on vaping? Besides literally every politician, Every huge body part org has chimed in on vaping. We have new anti-vaping groups that have just popped up like within the last year. The United Kingdom does not have a PAVE. Canada doesn't have a Parents Against Vaping Association. You know where that exists? Only right here in the United States of America. That's where it exists, right here. So basically, I'm sorry, look, we're sorry. We're doing our best over here in America. We really are. We're trying to work with, as as best we can with people that are unwilling and un, unable to learn about vaping and tobacco harm reduction and trying to get people off of cigarettes and alarmist mothers that find their kids vaping us, you know, a jewel. And instead of you know reprimanding their kids and maybe I don't know fucking grounding them for a few months. They, they go, oh, you would have never done this on your own. I need the government to protect you from this pod. That only happens here. That only happens in America. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry, United Kingdom. <laughs> I'm sorry. This comes from gov.uk. This is an official United Kingdom governmental press release. False fears prevent smokers from using e-cigarettes to quit. The UK is having to essentially quadruple down on everything they've been saying for the last few years regarding vaping and smoking and smoking cessation and tobacco harm reduction because the toxic news media of the United States is spilling out like an overflowing, just filthy oil drum of shit all over the place, all over the place. 
Australia's dealing with new problems now because they're citing the lung injuries. The UK is dealing with all sorts of problems now because people don't trust vaping over there. And the UK government literally has to go, you guys, don't stop paying attention to the states. The colonies are acting crazy right now. Just keep vaping. Put down your cigarette, keep vaping. Everybody should vape, yet you can over here. It's encouraged over here. We want our citizens to be as healthy as possible over here, so you should all definitely vape instead of smoking. Don't listen to America. Stop listening to America. Over half of smokers believe nicotine vaping products are equally or more harmful than smoking despite US vaping deaths being caused by substances banned in the UK. Then this is from the UK. Half of the smokers in the UK now, because of what's been going on in the United States of America, here in the United States of America, smokers in the UK now believe that vaping is just as bad, if not more harmful to them than smoking, burning, combustible tobacco cigarettes. That, my friends, is the power of misinformation. That is the power of misinformation. Public Health England's sixth independent e-cigarette report commissioned by researchers at King's College London is published today, Wednesday, March 4th, 2020, alongside new Public Health England advice on vaping. I'm not gonna read this whole article. I'm just gonna give you the highlights. PHE, that's Public Health England. PHE's advice remains that smokers should switch to e-cigarettes to help them quit smoking, but non-smokers should not take up vaping. Look at that one fucking little sentence right there. And that clears up everything. Do you think this sentence would be effective in the United States at all? If there was just a big billboard that said, CDC's advice is that smokers should switch to e-cigarettes to help them quit smoking, but non-smokers should not take up vaping. That would literally, I thought I had a burp coming. I think I still might. All right. That would literally go over here like a Led Zeppelin. It would be awful. Nobody, I mean, that, that wouldn't work here. That's just, it's, and it's one of those things that's like just a different mindset from the United States to the United Kingdom. Just a completely different mindset. Youths are curious about vaping. That's why they pick it up because of curiosity. Nothing more than curiosity. Why would they be so curious? Oh, I don't know. It could be, uh, but, you know, uh, California Department of Public Health could be the FDA, could be the CDC constantly bombarding them with pictures of teens vaping and videos of youths vaping. And then the Disney Channel doing a That's So Raven special edition about vaping. And then um, a new Amsterdam on NBC having this kid, oh, this kid's in the hospital because of vaping. Yeah, must have been vaping. Must have been vaping that sent him to the hospital. That is the power of misinformation. So much so. I mean, I can only imagine that people in the United Kingdom, if they caught that episode of New Amsterdam with the kid who's vaping in the hospital, would they, would they just be laughing at us? Would they? I think they would because I'm laughing at us. It's a little bit ridiculous. Public Health England's advice remains that smokers should switch to e-cigarettes to help them quit smoking, but non-smokers should not take up vaping. That's a simple enough little statement. It's clear as day. It's clear and concise. I feel like everybody would understand that. I feel like everybody would understand that. E-cigarettes are much less harmful than tobacco, but are not completely safe. They contain significantly less harmful chemicals, which cause diseases related to smoking, but the long, long-term impact of using e-cigarettes will remain unknown for some time. The mistaken belief that e-cigarettes are more harmful than smoking increased rapidly among UK smokers following the US lung injury outbreak in the autumn of 2019. 
UK citizens, despite their government constantly bombarding them with pro-vape propaganda, going to so far as to allow vaping in places where you couldn't before, allowing vaping on hospital grounds, opening vape shops in hospital grounds. The UK government's just like, you guys, vape, 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 everybody fucking vape, everybody vape, vape, vape. You can vape in a hospital now. Did you know that? Look, come over here. You can vape in a hospital. Now there are UK citizens that believe that vaping is more harmful than smoking because of the toxic oil sludge that is just spewing out of the United States right now because the CDC drug their feet for so long on admitting that it was only vitamin E acetate and literally nothing to do with legal nicotine vapor products. That's affecting citizens in the UK. There are smokers I mean, I don't even think Matt Myers is aware of this. I feel like Matt Myers would, this would just be a feather in his fucking cap. If you told Matt Myers from Campaign for Tobacco Free Kids, look, your misinformation campaign was so successful in the United States. Dude, you even got people in the UK to keep smoking, bro. You did it. Congratulations, Matt Myers. You did it. You got people in another country you got people in another country to have their faith in vaping shaken just because you don't understand what's going on. God, that's got to feel good. God, that's got to feel good. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry to the UK. This is all insanity. I feel like we're living in just a clown world. I feel like it's going to have to come to a point soon where we all just go, okay, <laughs> can we, let's start at the beginning. Va okay, va okay, okay, vaping. Let's start at the beginning and just go through it meticulously and realize, oh, look, there's a couple 13 million people in the United States that have successfully stopped using deadly combustible tobacco cigarettes in favor of far less harmful vapor products. I can't think of any other way to end that sentence. That's just what's happened. And the government... uh for some reason, doesn't really like that. It's one of those things where they say, quit or die, quit or die, quit or die, quit or die, quit or die. For years, when I was a smoker, quit or die, quit or die, quit or die. Okay, well, I quit. Well, not that way. <laughs> you can't quit and enjoy yourself. You can't quit and enjoy vaping. You can't quit with a red licorice flavored liquid. Quit our way. Quit with Nicorette. Quit with Chantix. I have to watch Ink Master now on uh, the Paramount Network app, which I don't know if you guys are into Ink Master, but go Angel Rose. I'm really rooting for Angel Rose this season on Ink Master. But I have to watch Ink Master and every commercial on the Paramount Network app for the Apple TV, every commercial is for something to help you when you're sick. There's like Dayquil commercial, followed by a NyQuil commercial, followed by three pharmaceutical commercials. One of them is for Chantix. Every commercial break, Chantix. They have this cute little turkey. They have like a little claymation turkey. Quitting cold turkey is hard. Quitting with Chantix is easier. You might cut yourself open and you might be ultra ragey violent to your family and you might have horrible night terrors that make you wanna kill yourself but look at this cute little chicken. Turkey. Quitting cold turkey's too difficult. Use Chantix. You know what a vaping commercial would look like? Just this, that's all. Oh, it tastes like peach and I don't want a cigarette. That's all the, that's the only vaping commercial you would ever need. That would win a thousand people over. And then you could even have that voiceover. Like you could have pictures of, like videos of people vaping and just have that same voiceover but there's not really any sort of like, uh, you know, negative side effects. It's like vaping might taste delicious. Vaping might make you thirsty if you don't drink water, but just drink more water, you'll be fine. Um, I guess that's really all. You get to choose your own nicotine level that you're comfortable with. You get to choose your own flavor that you're comfortable with. You get to choose your own box or 
tube or battery that you're comfortable with. You can adjust the wattage and adjust the temperature up and down. You can really dial in your vape so that you can make it really perfectly effective. You can have the perfect combination of like a tank and a device or a stick and a mod or a liquid and a nicotine. And you can successfully get away from tobacco cigarettes with literally no side effects, not even dry knuckles. That would be the only vaping commercial you'd ever need. I'm gonna make it. Tastes like peach, and I don't want a cigarette. Vaping, welcome to the future. And the future is now, you guys. No, we're not gonna talk about Super Bloke. Maybe I'll bring up Super Bloke next week. So I guess that's where I'm gonna leave that right now. Um, this is a very long, long article, and uh, gov.uk, gov.uk is not the only uh, outlet reporting on this, thankfully Reuters did a nice little write-up as well, calling it false fears about vaping, stopping smokers from using e-cigs, a UK report. This is from London Reuters. I'm gonna put that in the description. Whoops. I'm gonna put that in the description of this video as well as in the chat. How about right now, go. So yeah, I think that's really all I have right now for news and advocacy. Um, there was this thing, I'm just gonna mention this really quickly. Ah, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll save this for a Tuesday Bro Tuesday. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this news article for a Tuesday Bro Tuesday. They're giving out free e-cigs in the UK. There's this town in the UK where, that has a lot of smokers where they're basically like, look, here's just a bunch of free e-cigs and now this whole town can be smoke-free. You know, we wanna get all you guys smoke free. So the government's just giving out vapes to the citizens in this town in, uh, in the UK. And I'd like to talk about it. Uh, I'd like to talk about it there on the Tuesday Bro Tuesday. That link's in the description. That link's in the description. That link in the no, United Vapors Alliance and Vaping with Vic. Okay, so one thing I wanna do, it's gonna be going in the description. It's going to be gonna go in the chat right now is uh, fucking vaping with Vic. This is where I'll end. We're gonna do a, a liquid tasting after this. Damn, and the vlog's still gonna run long. A oh, Paca's here. <laughs> Fuck yeah, Paca. I love you, bro. How you doing, my man? Vaping with Vic uh, had his whole YouTube channel taken down. And that is horrible, fucking sad, terrifying. At the same time, I can't even, I, I wouldn't even know, I wouldn't know what to do. I would be gutted. I would be completely, completely gutted. So I put a link to his Facebook in the chat. I'm gonna be putting a link to Vaping with Vic's Facebook in the description of this video. If you're perusing around YouTube and you're like, where the fuck did Vaping with Vic go? His whole entire YouTube and email, Google just burned it to the ground. So I want people to still be aware of Vaping with Vic and where they can catch up with Vaping with Vic. He has a website, vapingwithvic.co.uk, but I'm gonna link to his Facebook in this description and in this profile so we can we can still keep tabs on Vaping with Vic. I, 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 I hate the idea that Vaping with Vic might lose some of his audience or lose some of his reach or lose some, I mean, he's been working hard. We've all been working really hard and I hate to see it just completely ripped away, completely ripped away. YouTube is God being the worst. I've never seen a YouTuber on YouTube praising YouTube. I've only seen YouTubers on YouTube like PewDiePie and Philip DeFranco just fucking ripping into YouTube. Steven Crowder ripping into YouTube. There's no happy YouTubers. There's no YouTuber out there that goes, oh good, I'm glad that YouTube is changing their terms of service again. Oh good, I'm glad that YouTube is changing their community guidelines again. Oh good, I'm glad I got a copyright strike on royalty free music. Oh good, I'm glad my video got Flagged. Oh, good. I'm glad YouTube changed the fucking back end again. Oh, good. I'm glad that there's another interface for live streaming now. Oh, good. I'm glad all my videos are getting demonetized. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm on YouTube. So here's what I'm going to say. I will always be at grimgreen.com. 
I've been putting at the end of every video for the last decade. If anything were to ever happen with my YouTube, which God, please, please let nothing happen to my YouTube. If something were to ever happen to my YouTube, I, just go to grimgreen.com. Grimgreen.com, everything will be explained. All my videos will be there. We'll find a new way to stream. We will persevere. Thankfully, we're still here on YouTube, but if anything were to ever happen, I just wanna remind you, I will be always, always at grimgreen.com. Grimgreen.com, G-R-I-M-M, green.com, green like the color.com. That's where I'll always be. I've been updating it like crazy. All my content is there. Uh, my blog posts and news articles are there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be posting just random pictures. I'm gonna be treating it like my Instagram feed, grimgreen.com. That's gonna be my home. That's gonna be my home. And look, Vic and I have rarely ever seen eye to eye on stuff. He's he's drugged me through the mud. I've I'm sure I've talked shit on him, but this isn't right. This is not okay. Regardless of how you feel about Vic, this is not okay. And it's frustrating beyond repair that he can't even get I mean, I haven't seen his newest updates. He cannot get any answers. They keep talking about, oh, well, you were linking to a controlled substance in the description of your video, or you were trying to sell nicotine products, which is a controlled substance on YouTube. It's like, where do you draw the line between, I'm just reviewing this, and I'm trying to sell you this. YouTube doesn't even need to seem to know where that line is. It's insanity. The U the internet has caused a whole new slew of problems that I really never thought would exist. There you go, thank you, OMB1 Kenobi. There you go, grimgreen.com. Everybody just take a minute, go check it out. Let me know what you think. I've been working hard at it, trying to keep it updated, trying to keep those THR advocacy links and information all nice and updated. Anyway, I appreciate that. Appreciate that, OMB1. Uh, how does he now say grimgreen.com like, oh, grimgreen.com, regulatorwatch.com. I'm Brent Stafford with regulatorwatch.com. Regulatorwatch.com. I just like saying regulatorwatch.com. Okay, so there, that's out of the way. We're running late. We're running late like we're always running late, and that's fine because I'm gonna do uh, a few quick super chats and then we're gonna taste the liquid. It looks like we're not going to get to favorite comments of the week yet again. Super chat. Yeah, all right, uh, Tenacious TX, again, Stan, I feel obligated to hold your device while I'm answering your super chat. No way, PMTA, yeah, I agree. Look, the PMTA, it's, it's, it's ridiculous, it's unreasonable, there's not even a clear pathway through it right now at this point, uh, no way, PMTA. Are we gonna all have no way PMTA signs, PMTA reform signs? We'll see. I hope to see you at the I hope to see you at the rally stand. Uh, the Canthal Kid, welcome. Very gracious of you. Did you hear about vaping with Vic's channel? Yes, we just talked about it. There is an attack on vapors from the left. I was working as a software engineer in the Bay Area, surrounded by it all the time. Prohibitionists. I'm not shocked. I'm not entirely shocked at all because that's what you do when you're wrong: is silence your critics. That's what you do when you're wrong, is silence your critics. It's crazy. I, I, my heart goes out to fucking Vic. My heart goes out to every vape YouTuber out there that has to wake up every single morning and check your YouTube and wonder if you still have a channel on YouTube. That is insane, the Canthal Kid. Thank you for being here, by the way. Fig, Fig feels good? Very gracious of you. Florida, urgent. Call your senators and ask them to vote no on SB 810 and SB 1394. See FSFA's Facebook page for contact links. Is this going down in Florida? Here we go. We're voting no on SB 810 and SB 139. What's FSFA's? I know you had a character limit because of your super chat, but what's the FSFA's? Uh, all I can find is federal student home aid. And I know that's not FSFA. Uh, I'll, I'll track this down. I'll get, I'll, I'll try to get a link for this in the description, but, uh, every state, you know, 
every state it ha is going to have or does already have some sort of vape legislation on the books, introduced, on the docket, going through the house, something like that. So if, if you are in your state, that doesn't make any sense. You, you're in your state. I'm in California. You're in your state. If you're in your state and you see some crazy shit going down, you can be that person. You can be that voice of reason. You can post, you can blast out on Facebook. You can organize people. You can get people there. You can start making phone calls. Like don't wait for somebody else to start doing it. Just, just jump in and just start doing it. Just, just do it. Just advocate and be an activist and just jump in. Fig, I appreciate you being an activist. I appreciate you jumping in. Florida, vote no on SB 810 and SB 1394. Josh, very gracious of you. Yo, yo, Nick, most, missed most of the live stream. We'll catch you on the replay. Pff, I guess so, Josh. I mean, that's fine. Here's another one for you. I had three vape shops forced out of business due to the Indiana juice crap that Pence passed. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. There was a lot of vape shops in Indiana that closed because of Mike Pence and his knee-jerk short-sightedness. Mike Pence, Mike Pence is not our friend. Mike Pence is not our ally. Mike Pence will never be my ally. <laughs> Mike Pence will never be my friend. I want Meg Mike Pence to just not, you know, I don't want anything bad on Mike Pence, but maybe he's got like, I don't know, a stiff shoulder for like three or four months. You know, have you ever dealt with like a really, oh, like a fucking stiff shoulder? God, why does this hurt? Stiff shoulder for three months. That's all I want for Mike Pence. I just want to annoy him for three solid months. Fucking Mike Pence. Jake, got you on the TV at my vape shop. Hell yeah, dude, I'm huge. What's up? Welcome to Jake's vape shop. I don't know if he owns it, but Jake definitely works here. So if you're here in this vape shop, talk to Jake. He should be standing right here or maybe over here or maybe over here or maybe I'm on the ground and Jake's above me somehow. I doubt it. Anyway, talk to Jake. If you're in this vape shop, talk to Jake. He's your man. He'll hook you up. He'll teach you whatever you need to know. You need to know how to wrap a coil. Jake is your man. There you go. That's a freebie, Jake. Cut that out. Put it on a loop in your in your shop. <laughs> Poon Sauce McNasty. Damn it, you're just one of my favorite people. I hope to get to see a bunch of you guys in DC. Hashtag, they can't hold us down forever. They can't. They can't hold us down forever. They can't run from the science forever. Let's go ahead and wrap up this Tuesday, bro, Tuesday. What? What is today? Wow, this is a strong beer. Hi, welcome. Let's wrap up this here vlog video with a very, 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 liquid tasty. This, can you read that? It says for Nick from not the real Gerard Butler. Lee, one of my yo yo -A cool kids clubs. I'm just trashing this post-it note, Lee. Just trashing it. Uh, I got some liquid from Lee, from not the real Gerard Butler. yo yo -A to ya, my man. It's called uh, Inception. This is from Satisfy E-Liquids, and it's called Inception, if it'll focus on it. Inception. This is a berry... That's why I was fascinated by this. A berry ice cream pop. Berry ice cream pop. Oh no. It smells like blueberries. I didn't mean to say oh no there. It was just a very pungent aroma. Hmm. Blueberries. I get a very strong berry blueberry from that. Probably because it's a berry ice cream. I'm just assuming... It does taste like there's going to be a little bit of culotta in this here liquid. 
I don't know. We'll see. What's interesting today is uh, I decided we're tasting this liquid out of an RTA. This is the first ever, first ever very random liquid tasting that is tasted out of an RTA. RTA! And the RTA that we're going to be tasting this out of is the gear. RTA! I got the gear. You know, the gear is, uh, I just love it. I just don't use it enough. And I think I find it annoying because the capacity is so low. You know, at first, the low capacity and this like the slammed down low profile of the gear RTA, I was like, I love this. That's cool. I like this slammed down little low pro RTA. Oh, it runs out of liquid really fast. Really fast. Just too crazy fast. But... Hmm. We're going to be tasting this out of the gear RTA. I just have a single coil. It's a fused Clapton in there or an alien. I'm not really sure. You guys tell me. That is a fused Clapton. Yeah, no big deal. Just a fused Clapton. It's whatever. So I'm going to put this gear RTA back together. There's the tiny, tiny, tiny little chamber. Let's fill this up. Literally, it's like one squeeze, just one big boosh squeeze. Boop, that's it. Now you're full, too full. Screw this down here. So, not the real Gerard Butler. Again, if I didn't say it, yo, yo, to ya, my man. I'll, I'll hang out with you guys soon. This is Inception Ice, berry ice cream, one last time from Satisfy E Liquid. This is not a paid sponsorship post. This isn't, I'm not selling this. I'm not going to be putting any links in the description where anybody can buy any vaping gear. That's okay, YouTube. <laughs> Is that what I have to do? No links in the description. No links. I, no links. This is not paid. This is not a promotion. This is not a sponsored post. This is nothing. This is just, this is just Lee. He sent me some liquid to try and I'm going to try it. That's it. That's it. Let's have a pull here. This is sitting on top of my uh, Vaporesso Gen. This is a 0.36 ohm single coil in there, and I'm only going to rock it at about three and a half volts. Okay. Interesting flavor. There's definitely some culotta in here, so uh, I can't believe it's this late already. Are you kidding me right now? All right, well, I'm gonna do what I always have to do and that's sit back and just vape this for just a hot minute. So the first thing I'm gonna do, it's no big deal, just gonna do this.
All right. I, you know, I thought I had music playing there. I apologize. I thought I had music playing there. Uh, where'd my logo go? Oh, there it is. Oh, I switched over to Tuesday Bro Tuesday. Look at that. Tuesday Bro Tuesday suddenly. What day is it? I don't know. Okay, I'm just kidding. We're back at the vlog. So, this liquid does have culotta in it. I'm getting a... It's not mint. There's no mint or menthol or anything like that. It's strictly culotta. It's strictly a cooling... is still on what am i doing am i new here hi welcome hi guys my name is grim green and this is my first youtube video i'm kind of nervous so let's talk about vaping it's good this vaping is good i like this vaping okay bye this blueberry is a very nice blueberry. This berry component to this liquid is very nice and cohesive. When I Sometimes when I'm vaping, I picture in my head what I feel like I should be tasting, you know? So when I vape Smacks Pony on Acid, I picture in my head a big scoop of like that semi-transparent strawberry glaze. Like, that's what I picture in my head when I'm vaping Pony on Acid. This, what I'm picturing in my head when I vape this is ice cream, but it's like, it's like purple ice cream. It's like purple ice cream, right? No, the music can't possibly still be on. I, the music is definitely off. No, I'm just having a beer. I'm definitely, there has been no shed time today. I'm going to say it's because of the beer. I'm going to blame the beer and say that I'm buzzed from beer and then that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Super Thursday. Okay, back to the liquid. Here's what I picture in my head when I taste this liquid. I picture a bowl of ice cream. Only one scoop though. Not, you know, multiple scoops. Come on. One scoop and the ice cream is purple in in color and texture, and then there's maybe little like frozen bits of other berries in there. That's what I picture in my head. The berry from this is very much like an, it lends itself very much to ice cream and much less to like jam monster. And that's what I was worried about is I didn't want to taste this and be like, ah, oh, just fucking taste like toast, like jam monster toast, dude. It doesn't. It's ice creamy, it's culotta, it's berry. Damn, not the real Gerard Butler. I'm kind of digging this liquid right here. Inception Ice. Ooh. Ooh. Very good. Really, very good. This is good. I'm glad I filled up. Look at that. I vaped through the whole gear almost. It's time to refill the gear already. <laughs> time to refill this gear all freaking ready. That's insane. You can just, I mean, you basically have to treat this gear like a, a dripper. You basically just have to treat this gear like a dripper. So there you go. This is from Satisfy E-Liquids. If anybody's interested in it, Inception Ice. It is a berry ice cream pop. And what I picture in my head again, purple ice cream. I feel like I'm vaping some sort of purple ice cream. Not like a dark, like Joker purple, but like a lavender, like a lavender in the clouds type of purple. Yeah, 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 all right. Like a lavender in the clouds type of purple. Really good, 
Shit, that's really good. All right, you guys. Dang. Well, look, we didn't get to favorite comments of the week again. And despite having no mail, this vlog still ran long. I apologize for leaving the music on. I apologize for leaving my microphone off. I apologize for this beer being such a high ABV that by the end of the vlog, I'm just like, I don't even know who I am right now but it's good. It's delicious. We're going to go ahead and wrap this vlog up. Let me take a quick look and make sure I didn't forget anything. All right. I think we're good. I think I've covered everything I want to cover. I think I've talked about everything I want to talk about. I've certainly uh, had enough dangle clacks to fill multiple vlogs over here on the Grim Green YouTube, but thank you guys. Seriously, let's wrap this up. Let's wind down. Let's just... Do some breathing exercises. Don't forget, that's what she said is coming on in about a half an hour over there on the Ruby Roo YouTube channel. They've got a great thumbnail this week. They're going to be talking about adult-only stuff. It's going to be fantastic. But seriously, let's do some quick breathing, some Tai Chi, you know, lift the orb of energy and things like that. Just breathe and shake it out. I'm going to wrap this vlog up. Okay, let me do some let me do the last of the super chats that I list that I missed. Kevin, holy shit. Uh, very very gracious of you, my man. You didn't say anything, but here's a fist bump for you. Jake said uh, I had an FDA agent come in and do a full inspection last night. She asked lots of questions and took lots of pictures. Luckily, we passed easily. Good. Jake, good. Uh, that's things that I really want to hear about. I want to hear about shops or liquid manufacturers or anybody getting visited by the FDA and how those meetings and how those conversations went because I'm really interested to see how they're going to be enforcing this if they have the ability if they have the ability to uh, to enforce this, Jake. Really appreciate that. That's wicked up. Very gracious of you. I feel like the FDA is messing with your stream as your messaging is way too real. No music while he vapes, music while he speaks. Where's your tinfoil hat? Oh, my tinfoil hat is always, always on standby, waiting right here at a moment's notice. At a moment's notice, if I want to put on my tinfoil hat, did the FDA take down Vaping with Vic YouTube channel? Maybe. Is Joe Biden a reptilian lizard person from another dimension in outer space? Fucking maybe. A lot of things make a lot more sense when I put my tinfoil hat on. Anyway, uh, seriously, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this vlog up. I'll see you guys around on the internet. You know where to find me. I love all you. I hope that you're having a good week. Have a great weekend. Be excellent to each other. And remember, please, please remember, no matter what anybody tells you, no matter what Joe Biden tells you, no matter what Mike Bloomberg tells you, no matter what Secretary Azar tells you, no matter what anybody tells you, no matter what PAVE tells you, you absolutely should keep on vaping, you guys. Be excellent to each other. Peace.